everybody. What's up? Welcome. Welcome to the HSN podcast. I'm Angie Corley. And with me, of course, is the lovely Mary. Uh, hey, now, everyone. What, what last name are we using now? <sighs> Mary recently got married a few weeks, almost months ago now. <laughs> is it still Keegan? Can I call you Mary Keegan? Call me Mary Keegan for now. All right. I'll figure it out later. All right. You know, she's on it. One day I'll be <laughs> dead and good, but we'll see. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, we're here. We have a really big day. We've yeah, got we an, an incredible guest. I, we, if you don't know, Diane Gilman is going to be here. And she is just a force yeah. to mess with, whether it's designing, you know, her fashion world, to really who she is and what she's sharing now. She's so deep. So I'm really yeah. excited that we have her coming up. The Jean Queen. That's right. She's the here. Queen of Jean. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and when we say that, literally millions, ten like ten plus million jeans. Yeah. That's crazy. It's incredible. So big day. So what you been up to, my friend? Oh, hanging around. Um, honestly, not a lot. Getting uh -huh. ready for Thanksgiving. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm excited. You just came back from New York. Right? I did. I did. It was unbelievable. I had a family reunion. I had a little oh, bit of fun. work. A whole lot of fun. Too much eating. We really had an incredible time. From you know city to bowling to just laughs and breakfast and meals and Aww. incredible. We Absolutely time, all you know? the time. And let me tell you, my family's small, but we're mighty. Yeah. So it was off the chain, off the Aww. chain. It was great. It was really, really good. Plus, I was a little disappointed because I went in hoping that I would see the Christmas tree in Rockefeller right. Center grow up. Yeah. No, we're about a week early because oh, it goes man. up in the beginning of November. Oh. But we're in a radio city yeah. to, you know, and today's show and all that kind of stuff was great. How fun. Yes, it was. It was fun. I want to book a trip up. You need, we, we should go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That would be We'll take it on fabulous. the road. We'll take the podcast on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way you're thinking. You know, what's interesting. Mm. And I just saw a story about this. Christmas is really starting early. It is. So we know at HSN, you know, we can get our return holiday return policy right. is, is going on, but it actually started. There's six days less than in the past. So like all the stores, everything is Christmas. Like did yeah. they skip Halloween? They skipped I feel it. Like they did. I know. I'm kind of the person though that skips Halloween as well. Oh like, yeah. I love going straight into Christmas. I oh just yeah. Favorite holiday. Gotcha. Yeah. You like Thanksgiving yeah. and like Christmas is here. I think we're less than hundred days, right? We're like sixty something days. Gosh, don't even yeah. say that. It's putting the Christmas <laughs> tree up ready? later. Speaking of Christmas, uh -huh. so are you getting head start on your Yeah, shopping? always the gift closet stays open. Yeah. Are you kidding? Anytime there's a sale, um, the gifts under fifty dollars is a big favorite. I actually saw um on HSN they had this really dope kind of um gift guide party thing. It yeah. was a holiday, I forget what the name of it was, but it is so good. And Callie like had all these, okay, have you seen this? It's it's um the popcorn that's in these ice cream pints. Uh-huh. Amazing. Mm. You get an assortment, wait, hold, I had to write it because I know I'm not, I, I okay. couldn't remember the name because it's so cute. Where was it? I just ordered it. It was the Pop, uh, Pop Sanity. Oh. That's what it was, Pop Sanity. Ooh. But they come in these cute little pint mm -hmm. size, ice cream looking pint size containers, like cookies and cream flavor. So I got that Yum. because again, you break it up yeah. and you give it as gifts. And my mom is addicted to popcorn. So Ooh. I already know it's in her stocking already. Yeah, really, really, really cute. Yeah, I think I had tuned into the holiday shop party uh, oh. with Amy Morrison. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, either. where the hosts get on and they mm -hmm. show their picks and you kind of get to shop with them, which is pretty cool. I love yeah. that. What is, so. I wonder what Amy, I'd like to be yeah. in her shopping I cart. Know, right? Amy, <laughs> we love you, Amy. Yeah, I hope they do more of those because I'm excited. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I got to look out for that. Sure. There's so much happening. It's like you can't even keep up with everything. But I did see one of my favorites because he's so colorful, Anthony with two oh. T's. He is such a hoot. So he was Tell on. Me. And first of all, if you've never seen him, his designs are fabulous. But what he's wearing is more of a yeah. show. How it's fun. like capes and bolero jackets. And he had on these shiny shoes Ooh. with sparkles and like jingle bells on the back. I don't know. He's so cute. Love him. Oh, he's love off that. the chain. He's been here like almost as long as Diane Gilman. Wow. By the way, he's coming up like 20 years? plus years, 25 wow. plus years. Yeah. That's awesome. And he still looks like he just graduated just college. <laughs> Like Anthony. I want what he has. Oh my <laughs> gosh. He's, he's got Anthony's angels. I just love him. So Aww. that's it. Speaking of coats, mm -hmm. I love that blazer. What are you Thank rocking you. today? Okay. This is DG2. Oh. Miss Diane. I got to ask her about this. Her blazers to me are as great as her jeans. Mm -hmm. I have so many of her that jackets, so coats, and blazers. Cute. It's ponty. So it's yeah. stretch. Let me see. Stretches. Let me feel. And 
So it totally worse gives. Than a stiff. I oh think my we gosh. talked about that last week. Yeah, can't like a do stiff it. Stiff jacket, you know. Nothing I love stiff. The blazer though. It's very Isn't it sharp fun? looking, and you can rock it with jeans. Do you? Have, of course, yeah. got jeans oh, I love on. Got my that. little uh, Vince boots over here, which I didn't even have time to put on because I ran in. Um, I love her blazers, but it's yeah. got the stretch and the fun colors yeah. and stuff. I actually got two, burgundy, and then I got the plaid. So nice. I was like, go D, G, two. Great layering what? pieces. Mm-hmm. Yep, love year that. round because mm-hmm. it's not wool. Yeah. I can't do wool anymore. I love that tank too. Thank is you. That, Th- is that DG? No, this is actually Marla Wynn. Oh, Part of okay. her layers. Very cool. Yeah, we had her on a few weeks, Diane, yeah, we uh, you know, and I'm like, Diane, her, it just goes. It goes. Right? Yeah, really That's cute. the thing about shopping here. You kind of just, I love to mix it up. Yeah. You know? Love it. Now, what are you wearing today, my friend? Oh, what I'm you got on? This really comfy, cozy mustard sweater, DG, oh, too, as well. Yes. Yeah, and then I also have uh, DG leggings. Brown okay. leggings on. Yeah, they're really, really comfy. Now, as slender as you are, they fit you. They fit. They're snug. They're a little snug in my oh! bum. Oh, now see, <laughs> since Mary got married, everything is like a little snug here, girl. You've been cooking at home or you guys I'll eating out? Pizza and pasta every day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and then I got these really cute Jessica Simpson what? suede booties. I love these. The pointed toe sock. You know? Okay. Those are in. Those are very on trend, you know? Those are, I got to move the computer. Yeah. So, so cute. cute. Yeah. Now my feet hurt looking at them. Are they comfy to walk in? No, they're really comfy. Yeah. They're cute. Wow. I don't know if I could go dancing in these, you know, in the middle of the street, but. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm at the point. Let me show you my, these were the TS and I had to buy. These are Vince Camuto. Oh, these are the cone I heel. I love those. These are the Ooh. joint. Love now, That's these a little bit booties. more comfort, I think, you know, right. a lower Listen, heel. I, heel. I'm at the point now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it is about comfort. comfort. Mm-hmm. I. Jessica, yeah. I love you, but yeah. my feet are not agreeing right now. So <laughs> no, I love, love, love I those. Do like the it's a pretty thing. gray color too. Isn't that great? Yeah, I can go with everything. Neutral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I need to put them on because yeah. I do love these boots. I will say too, this DG two sweater is really mm-hmm. great because it goes a little bit longer. I can pair it with my leggings and oh, you nice know, to like cover the pants. the rear. Cover the rear. <laughs> <laughs> the coverage. Super comfy. Well, I got to share a little something with you, my friends. Oh. Which took me a really there? long time to order. Okay. Like, I'm a little belt bag. By the way, do you call this a belt bag? Belt I have a, or do you fanny pack? You call it a fanny pack? I do. I know belt Shame. bag's kind of the new Come on, it's on hot. Trend I can't term. call it a fanny pack. I'm not doing a garage <laughs> sale right now. Okay, now tell me, do you wear okay. your belt bag across? I wear it across all day. I love all day. that. Can't do, I can't do it around the my way. Voice, I can't sit yeah. down. I already have a stomach. I don't need to add that to that. it. But look on the end. Look at some. Ah, my Apple pods arrived. Finally, oh I did it. All right, let me just tell you, you if you are an iPhone user, let me take it off. Yeah. Which I am. I, I just, it took me a second to say, am I going to lose these? Yeah. I have small like ears. Will they fit? Yeah. So of course I had to do the red because I love a pop of red and they're the AirPods. I did it. So I'm now, there's no cord. There's nothing. Oh, I love the AirPods. I was so tired of people saying, oh, I didn't see you on the phone. I'm like, don't you see these things hanging? <laughs> but these are great. So they have the little charging case. Right. Love that I got them here. And it actually comes with the silicone case. And I just clip it on my bag. All these accessories, kind of one, two, three, come included. And I just stick them in. Of course, I can't because my headphones are on. Well, but I love them. I did it. It's an investment. But I use my phone all yeah. day, oh, every I day. Too. I do too. I listen to podcasts, mm-hmm. I'm listening to my Spotify or whatever. Yeah. You know what's so great about this? Because I have these AirPods, but I don't have the silicone case. I didn't uh-huh. get, and you didn't the get them from clip. here, huh? No, I didn't. And you know what? Yeah. I, without this clip, I think I would lose mine. See? That's what I'm saying. I that's lose mine. T- all that's the why time. I didn't do it. Yeah. You so can clip these to your bag. Your everything. Jeans. My belt loop. Yes. <laughs> yes. They could go right on my belt loop right yeah. now. So I did it. And Ooh. I love them. I First love of them all, too. I'm addicted to music. Besides yeah. shopping, music is Me right too. there. So I'm like, okay, all right. I got them. I'm rocking them. And they love. just charge and I'm good to go. Yeah. I love this. So it took me a long time. But if you're like me and you're an I, an Apple user, yeah. get the Air the AirPods. Let me put it back because if I don't put it, I'll those. leave them. They're 100%. My new fave. Love it. So anything? I don't know if you've noticed anything about my hair? I mean, you usually have a pony <laughs> and it's out. You I did it. go for like a sleek, you know, yeah. pulled back look. Uh-huh. Today, I'm rocking curls. What made you change? I, turn around. Let me see the. Oh, it's like beachy <laughs> kind of wave. Kind of beachy cute. wave. Yeah, you know, the waves are in. Um, yeah, I found this awesome Martino curling wand. 
And what's really cool, nice. it's a split barrel. Okay. So you're putting your hair inside the barrel. Okay. Is that, that way? Is you don't that have hard? To, do I have to be hairdresser to do no, that? No, it it's makes the process so much easier. You know when you, have you ever used a wand where you have to wrap your hair I can't around? do it. No, and then your arm is up I, here. Mm -mm, it's like you're getting a workout. No. Nope. to hold your arm up for like five Yeah, minutes. I have to try to get it around. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't I do it. I love, love, love this uh, barrel. It's really cool. You just stick your hair in. Uh-huh, in the middle of the- And then you just roll up. Pause Cute. For a second. Yeah. That's, it looks natural. Like it, it is, looks right? like you have naturally curly hair. Coming <laughs> from a curly girl. New, you know? I, yeah, yeah. You gotta change it up. Ex I agree. Like yeah. my hair is a little wavy just, you know, from being crazy. Oh, I love um, But I can't, um, I can't use heat on my hair. I don't like yeah. to use heat. One, here in Florida when I'm here, yeah. it just goes limp anyway because sure. it's so damp outside. It's the but to have, yeah. No, but a little bit of curls, curl, it's you know? nice and soft and feminine. And it's so easy. You know? Really? Yeah. See? Super, super easy. You guys should You're check it out. Make me want to try. You're making me want to try. Maybe I'll have to come up and borrow yours. And Martino, if he's not wearing bling or shine oh or sparkle, gosh. the best. Martino, we love you. When he, hopefully, he'll come to the Ages and oh, Podcast I'd love room. To see him. Okay. And I also love his hairspray. Have you ever tried out? No. It's so good. It smells so good. Don't you love when yeah. hairspray smells that mm. good? I want to mm -hmm. just spray it in my mouth and mm. eat it. You're right? <laughs> it does sound fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's blushing over uh, here. But yeah, Mary's I'm blushing. loving my look. That's real. I bet your husband loves it too. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you see that look? She she was like, mm -hmm, yeah. I'm yeah, blushing yeah, now. You are. Andy, you always make me blush. No. <laughs> I can't. No, girl. Uh, no. So now we're talking holiday. Any yeah. Any gifts on your list for family or friends? Besides just... You know what? I'm kind of over. I say I'm over it, but like every year, the family mm -hmm. we try to do something different. Whether right. it's grab bag, it's Secret Santa, it's buy yeah. one gift, it's mm -hmm. skip a gift, it's donate our time. Right. So that's why I always buy these gifts where there's multiples. So it's just a little something. Right. But on my, I don't want anything, and I say this every year. I, I never I want that anything. Too every year. But then I watch it just and I'm like, dang it! I know. I need. Well, I don't need something. it. I want a little something. But anything on your wish list, period? Maybe not holiday? Well, we do Secret Santa. Oh, do you? Okay. Between my sisters and I. And I know one of my sisters loves everything lip. And she's a huge lip balm girl. Oh, really? Yeah. And I saw Beekman uh -huh. actually just came out with this really cute, I think it's a set of 10 lip balms. What? Yeah. Um, see, there's that giftable milk. idea. See? Yeah. And the packaging is like everything to me. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially so when you're cute. given a gift, even yeah. if it's for yourself. Yeah. Make it look cute and like, well, you know. That gift would be good too because you can you can use it as stocking stuffers yes. if you wanted to open yeah. it. I mean, I don't know if my sister needs 10. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you know what? I'm split it amongst uh, the I hate being dry, so I yeah. could use 10 if you want to buy a couple <laughs> of them in your cart. <laughs> yeah, I've got um the body cream, the vanilla whipped body. Body cream too is on my list. Really? Mm. From Beekman. them. Mm -hmm. You know. That goat milk. They are we just. got to get them on here. Kill killing it. Mm -hmm. What is it about them that we love so much? Is it. I think it's them. Is it the goats? It's the packaging. It's the goats. <laughs> <laughs> a little it's everything. I'm just glad. You know, I got to tell you, I got to be honest. So when I first saw them come on and uh, they went on another shopping network and I didn't really watch that other network, honestly. Yeah. But I was like, is this stuff going to smell like goats? Not that goat milk smells like goats, but tell me, did you, come on, tell the truth. Oh, did you yeah. ever think that it's going to smell funny? Honestly, when I think of goat milk, I just think it's going to be nice and, I don't know, <laughs> smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, vanilla whipped body cream. Now that, that of sounds, course, that smells, yeah. you know, like you want to slather that, that all over. That sounds heavenly to me. Right. <laughs> well, I'm glad I, I I have to try that. I I actually do have their shower gel, and it's kind of okay. a manly scent. It's kind of woodsy. Uh huh. My my parents came to visit. They're always coming. I love yeah. it. And I always get my dad a real masculine scent. Well, my mom likes her Cora's guava. Right. That's her favorite or the fig. But I got him. Fig. It's like it's like oh, it's like two and something wood. I don't okay. know. I can't remember. But it is the bomb. Like the best man's. You ever walk past a man? Mm. And you smell his cologne, you're like, excuse me, what is your name and what are you wearing? <laughs> like, it's, there's something about a great man, yes. a smell. So oh, anyway, yeah. their shower gel is, is really good. So I got I to gotta, I gotta try it. I'll have to look out for that. I might have to punch that up. Yeah. But Diane Gilman is coming up. She's coming As up. As I look at the clock on this laptop here, I'm like. We're getting close here. She's so fabulous. And I saw her, on, I mean, I've been seeing her for a long time. Yeah. And um, 
she's just, there's something so special. So I yeah. want her to just like relax on the couch and like break it down. And like, she's been through a lot in her decades has, of yeah. designing and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good. It's I'm gonna really, be really excited good. to hear from her. And um, we have some yummy looking. Oh gosh, not more. Yummy looking cupcakes. treats. Oh gosh. Blaha, Andy. who's one of our producers. Thank you for keeping us sugared up. Yeah. It's about to be a ride. But tell you coming. <laughs> Come on up on the Anderson <laughs> Podcast and don't go anywhere. Here we go. Oh boy. We are here with Diane Gilman. As soon as you walk through the door, we get excited. We start talking. So sweet. And it's like you're jumping in our conversation. Mary and I are here. This is Angie. That's right. You're here. <laughs> and by the way, you talked about some of your diet and your medical history. You've, you've been busy, and it's so good to see you back on HSN. You know, it was kind of incredible being on HSN for 25 years. And wow. um, when I got the diagnosis, I had to just step back from my life and say to myself, okay, the next year, year and a half, my job had always been fashion, designing clothing, and of course, being on air and sharing with all our wonderful customers, our dear customers. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that back again, but what I need to do is my job is to work with the cure, yeah. not to work against it, but to work with it. And I think the most extraordinary, you know, you have those light bulb moments, DG2 inventing the gene was a light bulb moment. So when you get a diagnosis like I got, you're sort of in a state of shock. I think I was in a state of shock for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we worked out how to post it on Facebook. And I remember my assistant calling me at home because I was getting ready for my first chemotherapy session. And she said, you've got 30. And it was right, we must have posted at 8 a.m. that morning and it must have been 12 noon. And I said, 30 people wished me well? And she said, no, Diane, 30,000. Wow. wow. And by the next day, 138,000 mm, mm -mm. HSN viewers had written me words of kindness, words yeah. of warmth, words of support. I never, I never in a million years saw such a level of generosity. And what an incredible family mm -hmm. HSN is and how fortunate we all are to yes. be here. Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's gotta be, I mean, you can't read 130,000. I'm sure you've tried to, but it's like, there's no amount of thanks. No way. Everyone. There's all you can do is try and support those women back mm -hmm. when you get a chance. So that's, I'm mm -hmm. going back into the cancer community um, on a support level with several different organizations. But also, you know, just being an aging female, I always felt like I was a cheerleader for our viewers and saying, I'm with you there. Like aging as a female is so not easy, right. but the right clothing, the right thought put into the clothing, the things that we do with, you know, changing your form, changing your silhouette, all of that is an uptick in your self-esteem and, and quite frankly, how you function within your lifestyle. And so I had always done that for the customer and been on their side where most of fashion mm -hmm. is kind of against you and butting heads and daring you to be perfect to wear their garments. Look at all the love and kindness I got back for that. Yes. Talk about karma. I mean, incredible. So true. Can you take us back to when you got started into the industry? Oh, that was forever. So <laughs> there was I hear your story. Yeah. <laughs> so there was never a time in my life from the time that I could really consciously form thought, probably at about three, four years old, that I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wow. always wanted to be a fashion designer. Basically, being born in 1945, there was there was no such thing as a career woman. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing right. as women working. That yes, was true. That was, if you were a woman working, it was because somehow you were beaten down and forced mm -hmm. to have to take care of yourself. So there I was three, four, five years old, and that's all I talked about. And I also had this amazing obsession 
with coming to New York. I lived in <laughs> Los Angeles. I must have been oh, the only okay. human being. Is that who where you're li- from? Yeah, oh, who lived okay. in L.A. who didn't want to be in L.A. That's from true. a young age, <laughs> right? right? Transplants there. I didn't yeah. like the beach. I, I, I have freckles and red hair. No, I am not the copper tone baby. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come back to New York. And so I remember I was in a, a market with my mom. We were buying food, and I was about five. And there was Seventeen magazine, which at that time was, you know, a big magazine, like right. Life magazine was a big magazine, not a teeny one. And there was Colleen Corby, teenage model in New York. Mm-hmm. And behind her was the Empire State Building. And she was on Fifth Avenue. And I remember pulling my mother's coat and saying, see that? That's going to be me someday, but I'm going to be a fashion designer. I'm going to live on Fifth Avenue. I'm going to be right by that big, iconic building. And guess what? My last apartment was right opposite the Empire State Building on Fifth Avenue. I'm somebody who punched through so many obstacles to make what would really my dreams come true. And um, my parents were very against me working. They wanted me to be the model of what an American girl should be in the Mm -hmm. late 50s, which was, yeah, maybe you go to college, but guess what? That's only to find a husband. Right. And so here's what we want. We we don't want you to work on your grades. Just work on finding a doctor. (laughs) A dentist is good too, or a lawyer. Third, that's about third. Yeah. And but doctor first. And that was not a dream I could fulfill for them. I wanted to be a working woman fulfilling a lifelong dream, almost an obsession. It, it, designing was so important for me. It would be like breathing in and out air for somebody else. I have to do it. It, yeah. I love it. I still love it. It still makes me feel so good when I come up with a design. I know everyone is going to want to wear. It's going to make them feel better about themselves. So I kind of broke off from family tradition. Mm-hmm. And um, I got together with a group of girls in college and we formed like a cooperative and we we designed and sewed all our own dresses and it went into a store we rented a little store and painted it like acid green or pink inside or something (laughs) and one day Cher pulled up in a white Rolls Royce with Sonny and the Uh, chauffeur came in took one look and went to the door and what? screamed, Sunny! And Sunny came in with the chauffeur and they took every dress. Well, they were all $10. Wow. Okay. Wow. Took every dress and we had to close down the shop for like two weeks because we couldn't sew fast enough. Get out of and here. And that started it all. And then um, it just became a series of of rock and roll stars. I also dressed Anne Margaret along with Cher. And you know it was very innocent at that time. I mean, if you were if you were standing at a deli counter to get a pastrami sandwich, mm-hmm. and maybe Jimi Hendrix or or Morrison from the Doors was standing next what? to you, you just started talking, and they said, "Oh my gosh, I love your denim. I love your jeans." And I was like, "Well, I bet I can make a pair for you." Mm. And that's how you got into it. And I did yeah. that for years. And as the music scene moved to San Francisco, moved to San Francisco, lived next door to the Jefferson Airplane. That was fun. And ah. I'm not going into any of Wait that. Wait a minute. Fun. I want to talk about these parties. Hold on. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> And, um, you know, let's just say youth wasn't wasted on me as a young <laughs> woman. And then I really wanted to come to New York because that was, I knew my calling was was going to become more elevated and professional. But when I moved to New York, nobody would hire me because I'd never gone to design school. Wow. So I took hmm. a job at Max's Kansas City at night, famous Andy Warhol mm-hmm. hangout, mm-hmm. and met all of those people from the factory. And in the daytime, I got a job working in the Old Ladies Foundation Department at Bloomingdale's <laughs> before bullet bras were <laughs> made famous by Madonna. Right. And one day, the I, I remember ha- always reading women's wear. One day, a woman walked in, and she was 
the fashion coordinator for Bloomingdale's, and she wanted the whole department moved around. None of the older sales women wanted to have it. They all went and hid in dressing rooms. <laughs> and she started crying, and I walked up to her and said, don't cry, I'm gonna help you, I'll do it all. But by the way, I'm a designer and I'd like to show you my collection. And so I saw her Ooh. eyes roll like, oh yeah, oh, God. <laughs> right. another <laughs> would-be right. designer. But when I did get a chance, to show her, and I, I would go work Max's Kansas City at night, Bloomingdale's during the day, and somehow in between, buy fabric at little fabric stores on the Lower East Side, go home and sew with my little singer sewing machine. I must have shown her a collection of like 15 uh, fashion garments. She picked up the phone. There used to be a famous department store in Brooklyn called Abraham and Strauss. A A, A and S, right? Yes, a and S. So she mm -hmm. called up Jean Charkey, who at the time was a vice president and the president of A and S, and she said, "Get on a subway which ran right under Bloomingdale's to A and S. Get on a subway and come here right now." So he came over. They bought a hundred thousand dollars worth of clothing from me, and I wow. burst out in I know, tears. Right? And they said, "Why are you crying?" And I said, "Cause I can't afford to buy the fabric for an order this big. I can't do. I can't. I can't fulfill this for you." And they said, "No, no, no. We're we will buy the fabric for you and mm. pay for the labor, and we're going to give you all the windows of A and S." Wow. and Bloomingdale's for two weeks, plus two giant New York Times double trunk two-page ads. You stop oh, it, Diane. And so wow. I Woo. was, through the most strange set of circumstances, on my way. And you know, the amazing thing is I've never been an employee because nobody would ever hire me. Oh, <laughs> now you have employees, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was it always jeans or what? No, it was, what were you? at that time I was doing tops and okay. and uh, the company, we named it Cabal, who knows why. <laughs> but um, I, I created a top that was like a prairie top with a double ruffle in the front. And it was, we sold millions of them. You know, wow. in the very late 70s, going into mid 80s, at a time when shopping in department stores was literally, I know so many girls have met their husbands, you know, st while they were standing at the perfume counter or something. <laughs> right. But it was Bloomingdale's uh, in particular and Macy's, they were such social scenes and Thursday night was the night to shop. What? And you, they used to have to black velvet rope off the escalators because so many girls were shopping that you couldn't, you couldn't just get up to another floor. Wow. Oh yeah, it was a totally different kind of scene. Really, really mm. different. That sounds like yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I, I just, you can't, being in New York and being a New Yorker as we are, there's such an energy and such a vibe. It's like, yeah. where do you, do you get your design inspiration from the moving parts of NYC? Or was it the rock and roll side of you that gave you that outlook. You know, it. it's it's all of it, but I also think that you're, like the way if you were a musician or a singer, you'd be born mm -hmm. understanding and almost feeling in your heart and soul tone in music. I will look at a garment, it could be, on, I, I accosted a woman in the airport the other day and said, yeah. do you mind if I take a picture of your thigh? I really like that <laughs> pant. Um, she was looking at me like I was, you know, uh, stalking her. But um, I'll just see something. It could be anything and I'll know yes. that that's something that's, I think that just the way listening to music is so emotional. Buying clothing is such an emotional experience. You're so happy if you get something you love and you feel so triumphant if you got something that looks great on you or a bargain or the latest yeah. thing that I, it, I always approach designing emotionally. Right. Not right. necessarily methodically, which drives everybody crazy. So but. you just switch, you might come up with a collection or a design and be like, nah, nah, in the garbage. Yep. Or somebody will come to me and say, blah, 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 this is what's happening. And I'll say, yeah, but not for us. That is not, 
that's, that's not going to work. Or that's, I want to grab women's hearts. Yeah. The way fashion grabs my heart, the way you get a new pair of jeans and you never looked better, or you get a mm. new jacket and mm. everyone is saying, oh, that color, I've never seen anything like that before. So for me, it all comes out of imagination, not corporate logic. And yeah. I think that is the difference with DG2. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a heart. There's a oh, passion. totally. Yeah. There's a heartbeat yes. mm -hmm. to the brand. Yeah. Yep. That's a new t-shirt. Every <laughs> You know, every time we have a guest here at the HSN podcast, I'm like, that's it. You I'm going to write that down. It's a yeah. t-shirt moment. Yeah. Oh, my what goodness. What did your uh, family and friends think after this You know, it, it. I don't think, I think, first of all, if you are on television, I think it's one thing to design fashion. But then I found that second talent, which was communicating to an audience. I think it's incredible incredible how lucky am I to have two talents that actually blend and meld together and create a greater than mm. presence in the industry so I think it when you're on television everybody thinks you're larger than life because the medium itself is so intrinsic. I, I so I think yeah 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 you're a fashion designer, but you're on TV, right? right. You're right. on TV. There's a bigger wow. Or yeah, yeah, totally yeah. bigger wow, and <laughs> and it it makes you look you know towering and gigantic. And I would love it if some people would trail in and follow us through the TV studio and see that, you know, it is a very different experience yeah. when you're on live. But what you create, hopefully, I love giving guidelines to our customers. I love giving them little fashion tips, anything that can make them feel more special, mm. anything that can make them feel like. I'm on their side because, you yeah. know, I'll tell you the story. I went into a major, really high end department store, had to buy a dress for an event last year that was all about breast cancer. And I saw some guy was standing next to a rack and oh my gosh, the dress was, the dresses were just incredible. And as I approached the rack, someone who must have been his assistant came over to me and said, no, no, no. This is not for you. This designer doesn't like large women. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. I'm a size 12. <laughs> That's too large. Okay. And they said, yeah, we don't make past a size six. We do Gosh. double zero up to a size six. Well, can you see as an aging female who may not be that much heavier, but your body parts are just all in different places. Fashion constantly rejects you as the yes. non-perfect woman. Mm -hmm. And here we are at HSM with DG2 embracing that woman and saying, oh yeah, we're going to make aging more fun for you, yes. more dignified more heartfelt and and you're going to enjoy being in the moment rather than blaming yourself that to me yeah. became my cause debt in life that became what i was born to do mm -hmm. i always designed for my generation but when my generation got to an age where it wasn't even so easy to find something you loved it was almost impossible right I came in and said, oh, not only is it possible, but you're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of satisfaction finding it from us and wearing it. That really became almost like being a trailblazer in the fashion industry who thought right. about dressing right. a woman past the age of 40 or 45 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or beyond. So it's uh, we are in such a unique position here and we can not only make so many women happy, but help them. So DG2 is so much more than a fashion brand. It is. Yeah. Can you move this down a little bit? You have, Fred, doesn't her makeup look amazing? By the way, that lip color, I'm like, I, I need that. that. I love yeah. that. Any chance you might do something outside of like... Yeah, the, I might. I'm like, but I, I, I keep hush, looking hush. at your lips. Oh, sorry. Hush, hush, and I can't talk I know, about it. I but love that color. You know, we it have, and you know it too, Angie, we have so many tricks or we develop. Uh, this is like four different colors oh, together. Oh, I love it. No, mm. figures. I love that. But we have <laughs> so many tricks and so many... Um, so many ways on air to make ourselves more youthful that would actually work in real life. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a beauty brand or a skin brand where I've put 
I put two or three elements together for me personally to make them work because I can't really find them on the market. Right. right. I would love to do that. So that's kind of in the works. I'd love to know oh. your beauty regime, like what it, when you go home. Strict. Strict, Definitely yeah. strict. First of all, drink a ton of water. water. But, you know, okay. this is all yeah. the anti-cancer medicines mm -hmm. you take. And so drink a ton of water. Never drink soda. Nothing with sugar in nope, it. I was going to say, yeah. The sugar but then I mix an oil that is supposed to take off makeup. But you know how much makeup we have on for yes, TV. True that. I mix that with gra grains of sea salt. And I've oh. created my very own emollient. Uh, yeah, that takes wow. off maybe all the dead skin cells. Ooh. And then I moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Big time. Right? Big I time. To, I, I don't like cuticles, nails, feet, elbows, nothing dry. Yeah. Scalp, skin, I have to have yeah. moisture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for I'm sure. For sure. Mm. And then I learned how to honestly appreciate my eyelashes and my eyebrows and my hair because when I went through chemo, all of that came off and that was quite an experience. Mm. Uh, uh. So as that started coming back, it was, what am I going to do with this hair? They said, you can't dye your hair because the dyes are very dangerous. You still have chemo and chemicals in your system. So I learned how to live with and create a totally new look yes. with white hair and what was I going to do and could mm -hmm. it really grow past a certain point? So it's fascinating. They say old dogs can't learn new tricks, but I, after <laughs> cancer, had to learn a lot of new tricks. Mm -hmm. And how I was going to look on air and was our viewer going to accept the way I looked? So I have to say that the regime is also for hair as well. And then the lilac hair was a complete mistake. My, oh, I, I went it. back to my salon for the first time in a year and a half. I was so scared to go back the first time because they had only known me, you know, for a decade and beyond when I was well and was constantly dyeing my hair red and it was long and now it was short and it was white and I didn't know what to do with mm -hmm. it and it didn't have a lot of body. It was really heartbreaking. Everyone was so happy to see me. People were crying Aww. and hugging me. Yeah. But they sort of led me, we, we kind of worked with one another as a beauty team mm -hmm. to say, what am I going to do with this hair? And no, I can't dye it. So they, they sent me home after the first salon visit. They said, you know what? You need to use our shampoos. So I saw they were in purple bottles and the conditioner was purple. And I thought, right. okay, I don't know. <laughs> I come out of the shower and my hair's purple. <gasps> and I thought, oh no, what <laughs> is this? This lilac hair. And then I swear to you, I went to the market, like my organic market, and all the young girls were yeah. like, oh, I, I love, love your yes. hair. And I realized everybody loved it and they thought it was a fashion statement and they thought it was deliberate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the best things in life come out of the worst That's mistakes. Right. That's right. So now I keep it that way. So I, I now I work a lot around the color of the hair where I, as a Leo, I like all warm tones. Right. But now with this hair, I really have to go into shades of grays and blues and mm -hmm. silvers and platinums. Yeah. So it's in a way for me as a design entity, mm -hmm. it's, it's very stimulating to constantly be working on fashion, but be working on a totally new look for me right. and experiment and does this work or does that, how do people respond? So incredible, very exciting time in my life. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I just think, okay, a year and a half of my life was devoted to breast cancer. That's done now. Live your life, mm -hmm. be the best you can be in the moment. That's all we can ask of ourselves. Enjoy life and live with no fear because mm -hmm. I, my belief is cancer lives off fear, like negativity lives yes. off fear. There's all kinds of horror movies where it's like, the monster is living <laughs> off your fear. No, I really relate. I, I really, watch those. I love, I watch all oh. of them. I really relate to that. So, 
you know, I just, I enjoy the time I have now yes. away from doctors, away from hospitals, but also being me again, being yeah. back on air again. I mean, nothing more enjoyable to me than showing designs that I'm absolutely passionate about to an audience that I adore. And they adore yeah. you too. Oh, thank yeah. you. See, th that's your spirit. It's so it's an entrepreneurial spirit, of course. But what you give in reading your book, Good Genes, by mm -hmm. the way, amazing. You and are so second, honest. Second, second book is Se coming out I was now. just going to ask because yeah. you're sharing about the fear. We're, Maybe that's We're halfway through the second book. And the oh, second book exciting. is not yeah. only about, you know, the, the whole rise from being a child and sort of being totally blocked from doing what I needed to do as well as wanted, which was designed to going through the huge blockade of um, breast cancer. And I'll tell you about a dream I had the night before I started chemotherapy, which I don't think there is a scarier moment. I mean, chemo always terrified me and now I had to face my terror. So I had a dream that I was in my little VW, my little beige VW, which was what I had in the 60s. And I'm driving down a country road and I suddenly come to this huge, mountain and it's literally vertical and I gun the motor and I try to drive up and I slide back down and I gun the motor and I try to drive up, slide back down, slide back down. And I realize, what would I do? Even if I drove to the top, it's literally a needle point at the top. I right. just drop over yeah. and crash in my dream. I got out of the car and I became a giant and the mountain was just a pebble under my foot. Oh my wow. goodness. I have chills. Wow, that's, that's amazing. really and a I special walked, dream. And I just walked over the pebble and that was it. And so to me, the dream mm. is about chemotherapy mm -hmm. and breast cancer and how overwhelming it is. Wow. But if you can just take a deep breath and reposition yourself and take the right attitude, mm -hmm. it can just become a bump in the yeah. road of yeah. life. That's so wow. true. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I feel like a yes. lot of your customers, a lot of your audience too, are probably going through something difficult in their lives that can really, they can And that's, to. and yes, that dream was so meaningful to me and such a spirit guideline mm -hmm. to what I needed to do with mm -hmm. the next year, year and a half. So yeah. That oh was my beautiful. goodness. Not so easy to share, but there it is. And and that's the thing with you, I think, Diane. And another reason why we all love you is because you're so honest. Like yeah. you have your moments. You're like, here's what it is. But you, there, know, isn't, you know, isn't 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 that what it should be? And I think yes. when you have like an all female audience, we have such a particular journey in life that is so different from a man's mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Men can age, lose their hair, right. get a pot right. belly, and they're still going to be attractive <laughs> to women. women. Yeah. Yeah. We That's have true. a very very different set of guidelines for how we age, and I think I became much more relevant as a designer and, and an on-air personality as I aged and realized, you know what? We all got to go through this together and right. support Thank one you. another because this ain't easy for so sure. True. Yeah. Yep. So true. Wow. I'm just, you're, you're so adorable. You know, <laughs> as I think about, again, that spirit that you have, what's your advice for other, whether it's baby boomers or other designers, um, to share or women, all you've learned, uh, women maybe in general. just women in general is you really have to find your way as you age and you have to ask yourself, who do I want to be? So at a certain age, I understood that I, what role did I want to play? Number one, I wanted to be the glamorous older woman. And I think that I actually fit into that role even after coming out of cancer, but I fit into that role better than I fit into any role earlier in my mm -hmm. life as a female. The next thing I would tell any female in their 20s or their 30s, even going into their 40s is, girls, enjoy it now, because it's all automatic. Tell them. It's all automatic. <laughs> eat that eat that entire pizza. Oh, I love go it. for it, because so guess what? Then. <laughs> there's gonna go, there's gonna be a time when that is not, you're gonna have to start working for it. Right. right. And understand that, embrace it, and make it as pleasurable as you can. But, you know, 
to me as a young kid, even I looked at older women and I thought, this doesn't look like fun. There's got to be a better way to do it. So I think that all my life I focused on what was aging going to be for me. And the Mm -hmm. one thing I always wanted, I didn't want to become inactive. I didn't want to become irrelevant. I wanted to go on contributing to society in a positive way. And look at me today at almost 75 years old, I've got to be the oldest living designer on the planet. And I'm still so excited about what I do. And I'm still so heartfelt to the women I reach. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a secret to aging. And I only say that because 10,000 of us in America turn 50 every day day. Did you know that? I I did. And we are a graying planet, which means Mm -hmm. we are, there is a huge majority of us Mm -hmm. are over 50 years old on the planet and we're living longer. That's right. And we're working longer Mm -hmm. and how, but nobody gives us any guidelines. How do we navigate all of that? Sure. So I feel that that is my third purpose on earth really is to be a guiding light for aging women and say, whether you're 50 or you're 80, Mm -hmm. let's enjoy ourselves. Let's feel good about ourselves. Let's do, maybe you live in a small community and you were in a job all your life that was corporate and you retired and you're bored with retirement. What do you do best? Do you bake mini cupcakes the best? Do you make the best chocolate Mm -hmm. chip cookie? in your community, well, maybe you want to, maybe that's what you want to do. Just, just figure out what's going to make you happy and don't ask permission from Mm, anybody. I love Just go for it. Love that. Just go for it. I agree. So is there anything on your to-do list that you're like, hmm, I want to do. I want to, I'm just, I'm on the board of directors now of of a couple of hospitals and and really organizations like Lymphedema of America because from a double mastectomy I got lymphedema where I can reach out and deliver a message but also help women mm-hmm. and um, I want to help women going through cancer treatment, breast cancer treatment, help them post-treatment, find themselves again. That's going to be my next purpose. You know, when you are as lucky, even though I've had so many obstacles in my life, when you are as lucky as I am to fulfill your dreams, to get to live in your dream city, in your dream home, and, and do things that you just love, I want to be able to give back. And so I want to do it through the breast cancer community. So that's, Mm -hmm. that is my next big goal in life. And I'm just finding my way, Mm -hmm. but better be sure I'm going to do it. Oh, I know. That's incredible. You know she is. uh, You know I'm going to do it. I do. You know I I am. Speaking of your dream home. Yeah. I follow you on Instagram. (laughs) I I I saw your house tour, (laughs) which looked Incredible. I love oh, my home. If you guys don't we already follow home. I love Diane on Instagram. <laughs> if you, you come, to New, come to New York, you've got to come visit oh, me. It is it it is, it, it is truly my <sighs> bucket list apartment and I'm right across from Central Park from a natural lake with little baby mallard ducks swimming yeah. oh. in it and <laughs> swans and I mean my gosh, the other day I was sitting on my window ledge looking over the park. I swear to you, I turned around uh, just an inch or so. There was a beautiful golden hawk. Wow. Right on the ledge. It turns out there's uh, there's a catch and release program with the Bronx Zoo. Really? Where wow. it, a lot of these baby hawks and peregrine falcons live up high and their first flight, like mom kicks them out of the nest and yeah. they ploop, go on the sidewalk. <laughs> the Bronx Zoo will pick them up. Mm-hmm. They rehabilitate them and they set them loose in Central Park and they take care of rodent population right. and stuff. So my building has its own spirit guide hawk and i was looking at it like am i hallucinating (laughs) (laughs) so i live in a part of manhattan where it mixes country 
and city. You can see the Empire State Building from my windows, but I live in a part of Central Park that is just a natural lake, a beautiful setting. And then I just have the honestly the freedom to decorate the apartment the way I wanted to do it, where I wasn't answering to a million corporate people. Right. It's just, you know, oh, it's beautiful. and so we, oh, man, we just it created, I'm ready, I'm with you. Next. We created <laughs> all this stuff. You're more than welcome. <laughs> We're coming. Wait, did you hear that? Okay, sorry. You're more than welcome. But that's a beautiful part of being a designer is mm-hmm. that apartment is almost my, and it really is my dream come true. And where, when you design, you've got a million people saying, do it that way, yes. do it that way. Here's the colors we want, da, 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 da. This was all me. I think it's the wow. only, the only time in my entire life where I have a space that is truly the essence of me. And do you want to know something? Uh, honestly, I never take one moment for granted in that space. And I always think this is a space that that DG2 gene light bulb moment Mm. 11 and a half years ago built. And my God, I am so grateful Mm -hmm. for it. Where every place your eye goes in the apartment, it's a color that I love. It's a color that, or a pillow that we created or whatever it is, it is so the essence of me that it is a total Zen harmony. I I just love love it. I love the garden. It's so, it's such an oasis. It is, and you know what? It's so happy to that garden. Even now, going into November, you know, we usually cl- we close it down and we wrap everything in burlap for the winter because it keeps it warm. Right. And the gardeners and me are like, one more week. But one one more more week. Right, right. It's still so verdant and beautiful. And you get to sit outside and see the New York skyline. Yes. And wow, am I, you know, so even I will tell you this, even for having breast cancer and going through radiation and a double mastectomy and chemotherapy, but just in the opposite order, you couldn't pick a better spot to be sick because it was healing Mm -hmm. in and of itself. And that was so incredible. You want city? Well, you look down all the, all the way to 34th street and you see every cigarette building, an amazing building, beautiful skyline. You want country? Just look out at the the lake and central park. Quiet. Mm -hmm. lovely. Mm -hmm. So I think that the whole design process for the apartment was actually part of the healing process. And then the most amazing thing was everybody said, really, you want to live on 107th street? Yeah, I do. I mean, I love it up there. It's like old time, New York, old time fifth Avenue. But the real kicker was about a year after I moved in, I got the diagnosis Mm -hmm. And somebody who I knew, a doctor who was a good friend, um, got me into Mount Sinai, which was exactly seven blocks away. So for chemo and radiation, Mm -hmm. I could leave that hospital atmosphere and walk home through Central Park in seven blocks was pretty attainable for me, no matter how knocked out I was from chemo or radiation Mm -hmm. or the surgery. So what a gift from God that was for instead of fighting it and saying, oh, no, I should be a midtowner. No, I accepted Mm -hmm. that, yes, I had this huge longing to have not a cityscape anymore, but a countryscape. Mm -hmm. And I chose this location and it was right by the hospital I needed to be at to save Mm -hmm. my life. Isn't it amazing how the universe, if you just (sighs) keep your heart and your mind open, the universe will tell you exactly where you need to be and Mm -hmm. what you need to do. Sometimes it's hard to be still enough Mm -hmm. to hear those lessons or to say, no, that doesn't feel right. This right. feels right. Yep. You know? No matter how the logic works. Right. Logic, throw it out the window and just mm-hmm. go from what your heart right. is telling you. That's the way I design too. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll we'll we'll all talk about things and logically it'll be the right design and I'll say, Nope, my heart is not singing. This is not it. 
Mm. not it. Here's what we need to do. And everyone will look at me like, yeah, really? <laughs> but yeah, really. Which, that's, that's hard now because you guys have trend reports and colors of the year and all these other rules to follow. You're like, no, thanks. It's I'm how it, it, it's how, it's how your gut feels. It's yeah. almost like the way you look at a menu yes. and it's okay. Here's the specials for the day. Yeah, they're not talking to me. You know <laughs> right. what? Right. I just want plain old spaghetti and meatballs and that's going <laughs> to make me happy. Right. That's yeah. how I approach right. design and really Really most most of life I don't logic is one thing but heartfelt is how I live my life mm. passion and heartfelt mm. is how I live my life Diane you're constantly traveling you're designing again you book. yeah how do you decompress and mm. relax what what's your I watch to? really cheesy grade D minus horror movies <laughs> Oh, I just movies. totally love them. Totally. <gasps> the worse, the better. The worse, the better. Do you laugh at them? Yeah. What's your oh, you favorite? Okay. They're hysterical. Oh, I mean, all the, all, there was one with Joan Collins out of the 50s called Them. And it's about, you know, during the 50s, it was all about all the nucle nuclear tests. So it was like giant ants that invade the <laughs> desert and it, Joan Collins is like in a bikini running going them 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 and I, I love those hilarious movies I can totally let go yeah. Yeah. with those movies so yeah absolutely so do you binge watch other shows or Netflix totally or, yeah. yeah I'm to I'm t I was totally into True Blood and I'm rewatching oh, that a now a new one with Maggie Gyllenhaal and uh, James Franco called The Deuce which is about 42nd Street in yes. the 70s and I moved to New York in the 70s oh, and remember that whole that whole and scene and shady and, everything but that yeah. is such an incredibly produced and acted program and I have so much respect for actors so um I love that binge watching thing uh -huh. and then of course the news I mean really someone needs to honestly take that off my television I know. screen. Oh I know. my god! It's depressing. It's sad. Yeah. I'm like, but I it's, I and just it's compelling it at the same <laughs> right, time. Right. Right. So I always call what I do fashiontainment because it's fashion, but cool. it should be entertaining mm -hmm. and fun yeah. and funny at the same time. So I kind of all mix it up and and love it and um, yeah. Of course, I'm on television, so there has to be a television in every. Every room. <laughs> every room of the house, which is really, Diane, yeah, really, okay, I like it. So, yeah, that's it. What would we be surprised to know about you? Probably that when I'm not on TV, I'm happiest in a pair of DG2 jeans and a DG2 sweatshirt, no makeup on, mm -hmm. walking in Central Park, looking at every plant, taking pictures of flowers I might want to see if my gardener can put in my garden. Uh -huh. And then I think my other real Zen moment, besides watching really trashy <laughs> horror movies, is I love gardening. So I'm out wow. in my garden clipping every little yellow leaf off, talking to my plants, feeding no, them plant don't. food. Oh, yes, you I do. Therapeutic, right? Oh, yes, yeah. I do. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I have a brown thumb. Mary, I never told you, but I have a brown thumb. So there's not one real living plan in my house. Oh my is that terrible? Oh, my house is covered. I know. Mine is because too. I, I killed a cactus. A friend went oh, to Arizona. Almost sent me impossible. One I thought they need a little water at some point. Right. Well, it died no. after about a month. Yeah, I'm you know what? So bad. I've got I've got Boston ferns, which are impossible to keep alive. That I've literally had for twenty years, and they're oh. still alive, and they're so huge now. I've got them on like a six foot pedestal, <laughs> and the and strands <laughs> are almost on the ground. They're so big. Oh, all right, so I've got to get something so nice. breathing. I know my yeah. mom tells me all the time. You need to have something living, my you know, oxygen yeah. or something. I love that whole gardening aspect. And I think mm -hmm. as you get older, it's it's nice to have something that's quieter. And you know, I used to love to be like in Studio 54 with music blaring. But now I like something 
nice and quiet and kind of classic on on the outdoor system that plays music Mm -hmm. and i'm talking to the plants and i'm encouraging them and i've got (laughs) i've got two little red maple babies and i'm saying come on a few more red leaves wouldn't hurt here (laughs) you're like the plant whisperer i am i am the plant whisperer (laughs) and uh and then we're bringing some of the plants indoors. And yeah, as a matter of fact, when I left yesterday, before I left for the airport, I was watering all my plants and saying, I'll be back in a day and a half. We'll take care of clipping you then. <laughs> so I get great joy out of that. Mm-hmm. I think I get so much joy out of nurturing and growing things, whether it's my business or it's Mm. nurturing the customer, or now I hope to make a big difference in the breast cancer community. It's all about making other things thrive. Mm. Yep, that's my deal. Oh, thrive, Diane Gilman thriving. Any exclusive scoops? For our None listeners. that I can share. None that we were to kind of share. <laughs> Wait, can you write it down? Right here, I'll read it. <laughs> I am enjoying writing the second book, though, really, really a lot. Yeah. So that's that's going to be good, and that that'll have a lot about what it's like to go through a disease where basically, when I got the initial diagnosis, it's you're dead. Mm, it was terrible. What? It How was, do you even have a conversation with your physician or team? It was a, it was a it, set of x-rays and it was an x-ray technician who said essentially you're dead. It's oh. hopeless. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Oh my gosh. Of 2017. Wow, you're like let's wrap that are. up and put that it That was mm-hmm. wow. I mean just, you know, you it's <sighs> almost like an echo reverberating. Mm-hmm. So you learn a lot. You know, I will have to tell you that if I had if I had to give my most surprising statement it would be I would never have I would never give up having breast cancer. It that mm. was the most amazing, most informative, most strength building, character building year and a half of my life. It taught me who really loved me. It taught me who just said they did. Mm. It taught me who was brave enough to support me. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to actually catalog and position my friends to come to chemo with me. I kept saying, it's not that exciting, I'm telling you. But it was like, no, I can't have three of you here at once. And yeah. it was like, well, why can't I come? Yeah, it's it's my, my turn. Yeah, yeah. and I, I met so many amazing women who were going through treatment. And I came out of it thinking that was the most clarifying year and a half of my existence and if you are lucky enough to come out the other end of it you will come out a different more compassionate Mm. more giving and caring person with possibly maybe a heightened set of goals Mm. in life and so i'm i'm grateful for what i went through obviously i'm thrilled that we got at least for now we got rid of it all but I would not give that time up ever, ever, ever. That set me up to be strong enough and be clear enough and be motivated enough to do what I need to do now for my third act. Mm, Third act. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Amazing. I I, I looked, I I just glanced down on our laptops and I'm like, is that time right? Yeah, we've already. Do you have to go back to gotta work? You got to go to your other job. I your did. Other <laughs> job has to be your other job. Hey, with us. My other job is getting on an airplane and going home. <laughs> Diane, it has truly been a joy. Thank you so I, much. You know, I met you years ago, and I was hosting here at HSN to dancing in green rooms to working with you on That's air. That's right. All kinds of fun, and my mother still begs me. Anytime I see oh, that your jacket, so your je- she's addicted. She read so your book when your book came out. I mean, you gave me an autographed copy because you. She actually did a show. I don't Aww, know if you remember. That's right. Of course, studio, I you know, do. That in, was and wonderful. Was, that was people. They hear your name. I see, you know, your clothes everywhere, all around the world, and we just are so honored that you're here with us. No, so it's really, it, you know, something. No more fortunate human being than me. If you no. are someone, anyone, who has the stamina, who has the direction to fulfill your dreams, and obviously this was one of my dreams to be on TV and show my designs and get to explain them, then you have no right for one minute to 
ever complain, to ever have a bad moment. Mm-hmm. You know what? My life is such a joy because of HSN and, and them understanding and allowing me to express my talent. I'm luckiest girl on earth. Oh, thank oh, you so much for being thank here you. with us. And we're really lucky great. too. And I'm taking you up on your offer. I'll see you in New York yeah. soon. <laughs> hey, I'm coming too. What, we recorded this. People, okay. <laughs> I have a virtual tour. I can't wait tour. for a fold out bed. But okay. I'll sleep on the floor. It'll be good. We love you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So much. This was so great, ladies. Thank you Aww, thank so, you. so much.